Alrighty, we're here today to talk a little bit about market structures and what they are. We have four essential questions that we are going to focus on today. Uh, the first one, what are the four conditions that are in place in a perfectly competitive market? What are some real world examples of industries within this country that meet all the requirements of a market in perfect competition? What are the characteristics of monopoly and what are some examples of monopolies? And finally, describe characteristics and give real-world examples of monopolistic competition. So, uh, what market structures are is that basically industries are, are different in terms of how their market is structured. For instance, the soda industry is very different than a farmer's market. And the market for electricity is very different uh, than a fast food market. Okay, so markets are structured in different ways. And we're going to look at the different structures that exist. Um, for all those things. So let's start with perfect competition. A market that is perfectly competitive, and this by the way is the hardest one to find examples of uh, because it is so tough to meet the conditions for perfect competition. But a market that is in perfect competition has many buyers and has many sellers. Okay, And these buyers and sellers really don't have any influence on uh, the market price, which means they don't have a lot of market power. Okay. The second condition for perfect competition is that the products have to be identical. Okay, not close, but identical, and that knocks a lot of um, you know potential markets that would meet perfect competition kind of out of it. Okay, you have to have informed buyers and sellers, and you have to be able to enter the market and exit easily. Okay, and so a really great example of a of a, of a market in perfect competition is like a farmers market. When you go to a farmers market, you have all these different farmers that are there. They're selling their apples, their potatoes, their tomatoes. Uh, you know, a potato and tomato, they're identical. Excuse me. A tomato is a tomato, so it would be it would be identical. Okay, it doesn't matter where you buy your tomatoes from. Okay, just like it wouldn't matter where you buy your potatoes from. One farmer is just as good as the other, I and mean, they're identical. Okay, uh, it's also easy to jump into a farmer's market. I mean, if you want to grow some tomatoes in your garden, you can go there and sell it, and when you're done, you can get right back out. Okay. So usually when we talk about perfect competition, the best example is normally agriculture because those products are identical. Um, you really can't distinguish them very much. Another type of market structure, one that I'm sure we've heard of quite a bit, is a monopoly. A monopoly is when there's a market that's dominated by a single seller. Okay. Um, now, some monopolies are outlawed. For instance, Microsoft got slapped around a little bit because they were deemed to be a monopoly, and that can be dangerous because when a single seller has control of the market, uh, they can jack up prices, which obviously is not good for consumers. But we do have legalized monopolies that exist in this country. For instance, We Energy is where we get our electricity from. That is an example of a natural monopoly, where the government says it makes sense that we have just one firm that sells electricity. That's easy and efficient, so why not have them you know, do the electricity? Also in this country, that if you're a company and you have created, for instance, a new drug um, that can you know, help people's blood pressure or whatever, uh, the government can give you a technological monopoly, which gives you basically a, a period of time to, to be the only person, only company, excuse me, that can sell that drug, and you can make all the money back that you invested in developing that drug. Okay, So monopolies are pretty straightforward. The next one is usually the most difficult one um, for kids to understand, and that is monopolistic competition. A market that is in, mono is in monopolistic competition means that there's a large number of firms in the industry. They might have some control over price, so they might be able to raise or lower their price a little bit, and that's because that their products are somewhat different. They're close, but they're not exact. Okay, Entry and exit into industry is relatively easy. But it's not completely easy. I mean, there, it, it does take a little bit of, of capital to get in there. Okay. Examples of monopolistic competition would be like the fast food industry. You know, McDonald's, Taco Bell, are they identical? No. Are they close? Yeah. You know, they, they both have food. They'll give you gut rot. Um, and, and there is some control over the price. Okay. Health clubs, another great example of monopolistic competition. Uh, you have the YMCA. Then you have Snap Fitness. They're kind of similar but they're somewhat different, okay? Do they have some control over price? Kind of, sort of, okay? So that is monopolistic competition. Finally, the last one, this is the fun one to say, oligopoly, okay? An oligopoly is when a market is dominated by a few large profitable firms. 
So if you can think of any market where, or any industry where there's only a couple big dogs, that's probably an oligopoly. Okay, so for instance, uh, the soda industry. Pepsi and Coke are pretty much the only sodas, uh, soda companies that you can buy from. I mean, sure, you got, I guess you have a little bit of Snapple, uh, but if you look at the pie chart to, to the, on the bottom of the screen there, uh, you see that you know, Coke and Pepsi have like 72% of the market. Okay, I mean, that's huge. All right, so basically when you have these companies, these, these few companies that control the, uh, control the, the industry, I mean, that's called an oligopoly. Um, it's very difficult to enter this market. For instance, if you wanted to make your own soda, you know, good luck. It'll be very difficult. You probably won't be able to do it because other two companies are so much bigger than you. Now, when you have an oligopoly, there's also the concern that shenanigans will ensue. Um, let's say Coke and Pepsi are like, hey, we're the only soda companies here. Let's screw over the American people here. Let's start selling cans of sodas for $2. And, and, you know, let's, let's both make money. Let's not compete. Let's both make money. Um, that would be called collusion, and that is illegal in the United States, but it is hard to, um, you know, it's hard to prove. So you'll notice that in the, in the soda industry, pretty much 12 packs costs, you know, 12 packs soda costs the same no matter what, which brand you get. Coke and Pepsi kind of are in this happy place with each other where they really don't get in the price wars with each other. Okay, and typically in oligopoly, you won't see those price wars, where you might see more of a price war and uh, monopolistic competition kind of uh, venue. Okay. Other great examples of oligopolies include uh, the movie studios. Ninety percent of movie studios uh, are done by ninety percent of film, excuse me, are done by six movie studios. Uh, the television industry is dominated by only a couple big companies. Same with the music uh, companies. Cell phones. There's four big cell phone companies that control ninety percent of the cell phone market. Uh, and if you look at beer, uh, Anheuser Busch, Miller Coors, they control about ninety percent of the beer industry. So, anyways. That's all I want to talk to you today about market structures. Feel free to watch this over and over again because I'm sure you're just going to want to keep on watching market structures talk. Have a good one.